Good afternoon. It's 12.05 p.m. PM. It is January 7th. It is Sunday and I am just kind of hanging out in my room. Yesterday I was starting a tutorial slash example type video and um, I was really inspired by this particular person. Um, they do these videos on Facebook and you know what this person does is they paint rocks and they were using a compass and a ruler to set lines so that they can get you know the correct pattern this is how they usually do that now when i make mandalas usually like i've made one actually I made quite a few but the one that i have in my bedroom um i did that the stencil and then i chose the colors that i wanted i wanted to make one that was like you know specific for my my needs right which i want to get more in touch with um you know the whole concept of reincarnation it's not that i'm not comfortable with the, co the concept of reincarnation it's more like I want to know more about my past life, right? So uh, mandalas are used for focal points in meditation. They're also used to connect to deity. Um, you know, they're used for very various spiritual reasons. I know they look very pretty, and some people think, oh, you know, that's a pretty pattern, but that's pretty much what they're made, meant for. So, um, you know, I bought them in the stores before, um, you know, just mandalas as they were, you know, just purchased like maybe like a, a little picture or maybe a notebook with like a mandala on it or something. Um, and those are fine, but you know, mandalas can be, the intricate designs could have, you know, a very strong spiritual vibration depending on how you design it. And of course, you know, some of these people, you know, the creators of it, you know, they're very skilled um and they're very meticulous when they're doing their painting um i am not an expert painter so you know i realized that the tutorial that i saw on facebook <laughs> the reason why she used a special tool in order to create the dots because you know i really didn't think the project was coming out too well so i ended up canceling the video because i kind of wanted to show an example of what i was going to do um but she really did inspire me to to work with that more and perhaps in the future i will get the supplies that she wanted i was going to just kind of use like the back of my my um uh, paintbrush to create the dots but i'm like no because they all have to be different sizes and it's almost as if like the back of the paintbrush no matter what size you're using it seems to come out pretty much the same size and i don't think they were as round and you know <laughs> as nice as hers i'm like okay well let's just scrap this but anyway um so what i did was i used more paint on top of it and i'm going to just go ahead and create a picture um anyway so today is one of these days where i'm just kind of hanging out working on art and um you know i wanted to come on here and make a video because i was thinking about um you know i i did have a conversation with someone that i haven't spoken to in over ten, oh about yeah 10 years okay so it was a nice conversation um it was about three hours long and you know it was good to hear from this person and i was glad to hear him. he did mention that he did speak to my brother and um you know i guess like in passive conversation or whatever um you know and because you know during the course of the conversation we were talking about like you know what we've been up to i wasn't really all gung-ho about giving him my updates because everyone knows that i've been going through hell and you know um it's um it, you know i'm surprised i could make jokes about it because it was kind of funny in a weird 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 way um but um I, I can't I don't know it's just like the situations the arrogance of the people that I had to deal with the bullying tactics the um the the fact that somebody would actually go through that length you know, to to create so much drama in a person's life um for something so you know I don't know just is that part is ridiculous you know because that that's the kind of stuff you could actually write into tv shows or sitcoms and it actually would be funny but um it's you know when you get to the heart of the matter that's when i get really disturbed about it you know um it's it's very uh it's the kind of stuff that makes you wake up in the night in the middle of the night like just sweating you know and fear um i was thinking about you know um the the abuse that that perhaps maybe my oldest sister my ex-sister tanya and my um brother sean never really thought that they were being abusive by being a part of this you know collective group 
but in fact they were and I do understand that there was a lot of employment manipulation that went on um you know and the, the I, I you know I what I do is I feel like it's it's to me it's very morbid it feels morbid to me that someone would want to take advantage of me in that sort of way um it, it just you know it's it's mind-blowing but anyway uh, back to the conversation it was a nice conversation and you know um you know there's times where I don't feel like communicating <laughs> you know um it's not because it's something personal it's just sometimes well it's not personal you know it, it's personal to me it's more like you know I just need to shut down because sometimes it gets to be um it, it's hard for me to elevate my mood to be talkative because what's going on in my mind is is just keeping me too preoccupied and um you know I, i'm not the kind of, i'm i'm the kind of person like you know they feel my energy like if i'm happy which i know that used to piss my purse off right but if i was happy you know people generally start feeling happy and if i come in with a skull on my face people get scared right so um i i tend to um you know inadvertently kind of project my emotions on people and that works it's a two-way street really because you know i've been in the same situations where people are kind of negative and then you kind of feel down because they are down it's like you know people catch on to people's vibrations and i can't you know fake being happy you know so i have to really be in the mood to talk you know um and i think that goes for a lot of people that's one of the reasons why people are more comfortable texting um, than actually having telephone conversations it can be very draining it's not that you don't like talking to that person it's just that um you need some alone time you know what i mean and um which is understandable but i would say the day that i had a chance to talk to him was i don't even know what day it was because every day is like the same to me but i think it was friday night anyway um the day that I got to talk to him I was okay I was in the mood to talk I was fine you know but there's days where I I'm just like I shut down you know and there's days where I don't want to check my email I don't want to do anything because you know it comes from the um the the trauma that I was experienced when I was heavily targeted you know it that sort of harassment is extremely disturbing to a person and you you start getting like sick when you go check your email you get tired of getting like ghost phone calls you know that sort of stuff you know and um because when i think about it all leads down to the same sinister origin of what i've talked about about the joseph mangalay thing and all that stuff and it was also sinister enough it was sinister enough when I thought that my family was only behind it you know what I mean it, it just it bothers me it does but um anyway um I did want to kind of go over some intuitive messages that I've been getting um let me see the first one is is that um people agree like is there's like this total agreement about the video that I posted on um uh, November 19th um I was basically talking about my frustration of the um kind of like the hoops i have to like go through just to be able to survive um i i when i think about you know being targeted as kid throughout my entire life and then especially like things as sensitive as the workplace that's how you survive that's how you make your living and you know i would in the conversation that i had with you know um that i had on friday he was telling me he's very stable and you know what? i'm very happy for him i'm glad that he's stable because i would not wish this situation on anybody i really wouldn't you know um i wouldn't wish you know um you know people trying to get themselves together and then somebody's just taking their life their their life you know willy-nilly like they just think it's okay to play these sort of games it's okay to have people harass you at work it's okay to do these sorts of, it's like they have absolutely no regard for you whatsoever you know what i mean and that to me when i realized that my family was behind this it was like my god how could you do something like this you know um but then when it got to um the point of where i understood where the origins were it just got even worse you know so it's not that um 
I appreciate the support that I got and the agreements on I got on that video. I you know, I don't get a lot of likes on my video. If I do get likes, I do suspect that my channel is being manipulated. I do suspect that my channel has more you know, viewers on it. Um, when you're dealing with uh, what do you call it, gang stalking, um, people who get who have like power or the ability to communicate with different companies and stuff like that. they have. I mean, these people have the power to do whatever. This is one of the reasons why I was blacklisted everywhere okay so um but there i feel it on an intuitive level about the support that i'm getting on that particular video um i have dealt with lifelong like um bullying and harassment and you know i'm coming to understand the reason why and there is definitely anger there there's justified anger there you know um but i was always treated as if I did something wrong. You know, I was always treated like I did something wrong. And it was always that way, you know. And the fact that, you know, I, I was in a family dynamic that was fake um, is disturbing to me. Because there were the times where, you know, I know when I was really little, like I would say things to my mom and she would freak the fuck out. Or she was just really angry. <laughs> I was just thinking a couple of days ago, like, my mom would get angry and you know how like you, you, you scrunch your face up like when you're angry she would have this like little triangle shape that would be in the middle of her forehead and I, I called it a sailboat right and every time I she would start getting angry I would say that I would associate a sailboat with her <laughs> with her anger <laughs> with her anger but there are times like I guess maybe when they felt as though I was more contained like when it, I I did a lot of things to around the house apparently when I was a kid like maybe I get this feeling that I had the ability to make things levitate or things that were extremely supernatural not on a subtle level and I think it caused my mom some sort of mental disturbance which I fully understand as an adult okay um but you know by the time you know I was like around six it starts to taper off okay so these things kind of like be, get minimized to like maybe having weird um, um, visitations by weird like entities in your room or stuff like that, like sporadic stuff. But you start to lose control of like the ability to make things levitate because I don't ever recall at that age having anything like that powerful like manifest. You know what I mean? at that after those ages okay so but there were times when I was in grade school where my relationship with my mom was believable like it seemed as though she really enjoyed my company so and I know that when I was in grade school I was doing very good in school and my mom was always praising me of course because that made her look good probably <laughs> there's her ego again but anyway um you know she I felt like I was happy in my family I looked forward to being with my mother and my you know spending time with them and stuff but it, it's like and then when I got in my teenage years I'm really trying to pinpoint when my father started freaking the fuck out like I, I can't help but do that because that is a point of where things started turning Okay, and I know that when I was in junior high school, you know, um, you know, I started getting more expressive with who I was and, you know, just showing interest in whatever. And I know that, you know, parents talk about stuff like that, right? And then when I got like a little bit older as a teenager, I would go to thrift shops and stuff like that. And I was doing things that my parents thought were like kind of backwards, you know, and maybe because I was this alone and maybe they had some sort of expectation of me I'm trying to figure out why why did everything get turned around on on my dad and what happened because um because everything just went to shit and it seems as though I was getting like constantly badgered by um, you know, the kids at school, I was dealing with, um, 
my, my, seems like my mother was blaming me for everything that was going wrong, you know? And it was like, I, I, I couldn't take it, you know? I didn't even understand what was going on. But obviously, there was some sort of outside pressure on my dad or something, you know? Um, I know that, I, I wonder, was there outside pressure for him to send us to those churches that, um, that, um, or there was some sort of outside pressure for him to start looking into religion. I, you know, I'm trying to figure out why, <laughs> at what point, like, what point did it all go wrong, you know? And I keep thinking it was sometime, like, in my teenage years is when it started going wrong. I know my dad was, uh, you know, he would get really emotional and he stopped, you know, communicating like he used to. I, I noticed there was a big change in his behavior and, you know, he would start getting forgetful and stuff. And I started, um, it's funny because like, just like a year or so before that I had learned about Alzheimer's disease, you know, and, um, I remember my dad was starting to forget stuff. So like back then they didn't have the internet, right? So I lived on the east side and the um, library was on the west side. So I would walk, okay, I'm a walker, okay? And I that still has not like left me. Cause I, I, I was late getting my driver's license so I would walk, you know? <laughs> and I'm used to walking long distances. I, it doesn't bother me, but anyway. I was, I walked to the library and I looked at some books on, um, you know, mental disorders and I started to suspect my father of having an Alzheimer's related disease. And I was looking into how can you test for this, right? And so I found, um, this, like the, they said, you know, go ahead and ask them to draw the face of a clock, right? Um, and I, remember going home and asking my dad to draw a clock and that clock was so messed up it was like how in the world I could think how in the world and I kept trying to tell my mom that something was wrong with my dad and she would think that it was like I was just making things up like I was exaggerating she knew that he was like getting forgetful she knew that right but it was like she completely swept it under the rug you know what I mean she was in denial of it but anyway he started losing his mind and his behavior changed he wasn't the same person he was slowly deteriorating into something I, I could not help but notice it I couldn't help but notice it and he seemed nervous all the time and he just seemed like he was just becoming like a little kid you know like a like a somebody who, who, who needed somebody around. Like, I think the last time that, oh gosh, we went to Pennsylvania, like in I don't know, 1988, somewhere around there, there were two deaths in the family, right? And I know that my father has always been like really independent, but he really wanted me to, and my sister to go with him. He wanted, he did not want to go by himself. And I think it's because he probably felt like he would get lost somewhere in traveling. You know, and I, I picked up on all of these things and we ended up having to put him in a nursing home where he passed away and he was not himself. And it really, I didn't understand the kind of pressure that he was going through. I don't know. I personally think that there's a lot that needs to be looked at when it comes to these so-called Alzheimer's related diseases. I believe that my father actually had multi-infarct dementia which is a Alzheimer's related disease. You know, I was always reading into these like <laughs> medical books because I don't know, I was had an interest in that sort of stuff. But anyway, that I don't think they, they have never classified that on any of his medical documents, but I believe that's what he had because he, it was accompanied by strokes, right? My dad had a bunch of strokes and stuff like that too. So um, anyway, I got veered off because I'm just like, you know me. But anyway, <laughs> um, you know, my life has been like a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. 
of having absolutely no stability, not having any, literally no stability. Like I have no family. Okay. My son is my only family. Okay. My family was fake. They couldn't wait to get the shit over with. That's why my pictures were like removed from their house. Like the last time I saw my mom, there was no pictures of me. And I was sitting here asking my mom, mom, there used to be this picture. They used to have this like little cube. It was like a paperweight, right? And this is when like the family unit was rather small. Like there wasn't so many grandkids. So like there was a picture of me, there was a picture of my sister. And then there was like one of, I think my brother and whatever. And like the two grandkids or whatever. It was like on this, like, I don't know. It was like shaped like a dice. Okay. So cubic type thing. And like my picture wasn't even there. And then the picture that used to be on her mirror was gone. And I'm like, that my graduation picture or whatever, the high school picture that you take was gone. That she used to keep that in the house. It was like nothing of me at all. And I questioned my mom about it. And she was acting all dumb, you know? Um, I think that the whole religion thing or somebody said that my mom, I was evil or something along those lines. And I, I don't know, but whatever the whole thing and then me not being able to find a job um people thinking that that was funny you know i will tell you everything that i've suffered in my life is goes down to this issue this issue has followed me throughout my entire life okay that's why i'm in the situation i'm in now that's not a joke okay and I'm the kind of person that's like, I never asked anyone to um, support me. Like what I mean by that is I've always known that I was somehow, whether it be through my family or whatever, I'm always having these fucked up interactions with people. Uh, weird shit's always happening to me. And I, I know that I can't trust people. So I have to, you know, I do everything I can to be independent. I don't want to be in a situation where you know, I have to rely on anybody because I can't trust anybody. Now, I knew that there was a time where I believe through this situation that I was in <laughs> um, that people felt as though they had some sort of right over me, as if I didn't have any rights. You know what I mean? Like people, like your husband chooses your job, your sister or whatever. Um, I will say that I feel that there was sort of some sort of energy about Tanya and Sean doing things you know, to me, resenting me for my religious beliefs. I feel angry that this was an issue that should have been discussed. Really, it shouldn't be discussed anyway, because like, I feel like, you know, my parents said that the religion was open, right? Um, you do what you want to do. So that would be the end of the discussion, seeing as how they were the heads of the family and my siblings don't mean shit, but it seemed as though that people felt and uh, they felt entitled to have some sort of control or say over my life. And I think that's where I get, that's what really pisses me off. Okay. I, I'm angry because that's illegal, first of all. And the fact that th these are the last people that I would want any part, any, anything to do with my adult life. Okay. I have nothing to do. Like I literally have no reason to acknowledge anybody from that family. And I'm, re I'm referring to my sibling, Tanya, my brother, Rashawn, and my sister, Lisa, my ex family. Okay. Um, there is no tie there, you know, now apparently I, on paper, I'm a legal, I'm legally the daughter of James Gordon, regardless of what he, this bullshit. Okay. I am still legally associated with James Gordon, but as an adult, whether I had a, a good relationship with my family or not, I don't have any legal, um, ties to them. I'm over the age of 18, you know? And this is what pisses me off that, you know, people felt entitled to have any sort of say in my life without discussing it with me first and taking advantage of me, you know? Um, so I do appreciate the support that I got on that. Also, I, the other intuitive message I got is that there's a lot of people who are waking up and starting to get the feeling that they were in fake families too. And, um, I, I'm going to tell you right now, it is very disturbing to find out that, you know, it may not be such a big issue, like maybe such as mine, like to where this whole, like you're cloned or whatever, maybe you're waking up and start to realize maybe, Hey, this relationship was kind of weird. And you might just find out that you were just simply adopted. 
But whatever the case is, people are starting to realize like, okay, there's an explanation as to why I'm this way, they're this way, and we don't see eye to eye on anything because you guys are completely not related, right? Anyway, um, also the intuitive messages that I've been getting, because I don't know about like my life really as Prince Aloe, who I'm getting certain like intuitive messages about this issue. Now, I don't know, this sounds crazy, but I do know that Prince Alame, who was, I'm going to say naturally gifted with some sort of mystical abilities, right? But he also took an interest in the occult. And this is the reason why he probably gravitated to this, okay? Um, most people are naturally born this way, okay? But it's more pronounced in other people. They may have more gifts than everyone else may have stronger abilities and I'm one of those people. So this message that I'm getting in my mind is that the prince has the ability to fly. Now, I don't know if that's literal, okay? And what I'm saying is that, you know, there's legends, okay, of like particular people like within tribal groups or like like, like sometimes like even in witches okay witch covens or whatever talking about them being able to fly now like they would take herbs like i don't know like belladonna or something that would make them uh, be able to perform like astral projection and this is why they say oh witches were flying okay <clears throat> when in fact they weren't actually flying like they weren't on broomsticks out the sky flying they were actually flying through like the astral plane being you know doing astral projection right so this is the message that i'm getting that the prince could fly i'm thinking possibly through astral i don't really i uh, maybe i have to meditate on this more <laughs> because i don't really think that could it possibly be that the prince actually had the ability to literally fly like i like me spreading out my arms and just like take it off like an airplane is that possible you know what i mean i have to ask myself that but for now the message i'm getting is the prince has the ability to fly so i'm assuming that it was only through some sort of astral projection i don't think that i gotta think about that one a little bit more but anyway the next message that i got is that people they'll feel as though it's okay for me to talk about my life as the prince and here's the thing i feel um uncomfortable a little bit about that but at the same time i do think that it's a part of my life's journey to talk about my connection with prince alamehu um i do remember like when i was in my 30s i was like seriously meditating about understanding like um past lives because it's something I really wanted to understand because I, I did a lot of reading about reincarnation. I too wanted to know who I was, right? So I do remember having these meditations and, and focusing on understanding and my under, my message that I got that there will be a time in my life where these things will unfold, where I will start getting little pieces of the puzzle and it will start escalating and I'll know more and more and more until I fully understand like this whole life cycle thing, right? So me coming to understand that I'm Prince Alamehu to me is a big deal. It's it's huge. It's like this is like part of this meditation that I did many years ago, right? So I'm appreciative about knowing myself as Prince Alamehu. But still it's kind of like I understand that reincarnation as much as it's becoming more trendy to talk about, um, it's still, uh, to some people, believe believe it or not, this concept is kind of new, you know, because a lot of people, you know, have a, a, a very um, set mind on um, the destination after life, right? Um, I'm going to say that I don't doubt or discredit anybody who like people who say they come back from the dead or whatever they have they might have died on like the operating table and they they, they revive consciousness like you know a little bit after <clears throat> I'm not saying that they're or discrediting what they're saying I'm not saying that there's a possibility that people have different destinations some people get reincarnated some people go through another um, you know get zapped up right <laughs> right after they die into something else you know I'm not saying that. I'm just saying is, you know, um, you know, I, when I've read about different cultures who believed in reincarnation, 
um, and how I see that it, it plays a, a big role in a lot of different you know religious traditions and the reason why is because there must be something significant about it and this must play a, a a role in just about everybody's culture right so i see a connection there and i think it's important for me to understand that and i, I appreciate that you know but anyway um that's the message that i get is that you know people feel as though it's okay for me to talk about um me being prince alame who and um, I, like I said, I don't know much about it. I, I do get that message that the prince has the ability to fly. And so, like I said, based on what I've read many years ago about, and, and my experiences, my brief little quick experiences, you know, with astral projection um, involuntarily, of course, um, I do understand that when they talk about flying, they usually mean astral flying. Um, I'm going to have to meditate more to see if it, that would even be possible. Um, I know that there are certain occultists, you know, like certain people talk about different occultists, and people who practice the occult all have different agendas. Some people just like, you know, understanding how to work with certain forms of alchemy or whatever. And then some people um, get into very, very strange things, okay, um, things that I would never touch. You know, and like things like necromancy and stuff like that, you know, weird stuff, weird, 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 weirder than weird stuff. Um, uh, they they get into those sort of things, and uh, you know, I do know that some some people claim that like people like Aleister Crowley could like perform all kinds of strange things um, like levitations and stuff like that. Perhaps, maybe, you know what I mean. Um, I've never done anything like that you know what i mean and i don't really believe in this lifetime i have the ability to levitate you know what i mean i don't i don't think so but maybe in the, in the past i did you know um who, who, who's to say i don't know anyway the other message was is that i was i i believe though that um you know the, the, when we think about the story of uh prince alame who um, that there might have been a possibility that maybe I was taken because um, <clears throat> of my special gifts. There, there, I could, there could be a possibility. I do get that, you know, that thought of perhaps maybe. Now, that's not necessarily an intuitive message, but maybe <clears throat> I've always been that way. Even before I have been as an adult or, see, Prince Alamey who died when he was like 18 years old, right? But so I'm going to say, as he, as he was an adult. To me, when I think of 18 years old, I think you're a kid, really, to me, still, but um, <clears throat> I'm going to say as he was an adult, okay? But he may have, like, started studying things about the occult when he was maybe, I don't know, let's just say maybe, maybe 14, and through those four years of him gaining knowledge on formal, getting, like, a formal occult knowledge, what I mean by that is, like, as a kid, maybe he could have been like me when I was a kid, making things levitate or making things talk, you know, that kind of weird stuff. Maybe he had that ability, but then maybe he started like studying with different groups, uh, maybe joined maybe certain societies, you know, um, and um, like where you get initiated into certain type occult type of practices. Maybe that's what he did. I don't know. I, I'm just, I maybe I'll like, get more answers that I, you know, meditate more, but, um, this, this is where he gets identified as being an occultist instead of just like a weirdo, you know, the kid, the guy who has the ability to do these very strange things, but like understood, like, you know, working with, um, you know, complex forms of what they call ceremonial magic, right? That we, that could have been what he was into. I don't know, but that makes sense to me. Right. Um, because I know occult books have, have never been easy to obtain, at least not when I I can remember back in the school days, like when I was a kid, they would have those there, not like not in the school library, but they had them in the public library. And usually when they got checked out, they, nobody ever really returned them. Those were the books that got ripped off. <laughs> those were the books. So I mean, I'm assuming that perhaps maybe he may have been in some sort of magical order. You know what I mean? Maybe, possibly. Anyway, um, the other me message that I got is is that the majority of the United States believes my story. Okay, um, 
So, like I said, I do think that people knew who I was, and the the fact that I'm black, I was blacklisted um, throughout the United States, basically kind of proves my point. People do know who I am. Um, I think that's about the only intuitive message I had. I think the the thing that I was focusing on today was just you know being angry um, about you know being taken advantage of you know um, by my siblings and not knowing like them knowing what I was going through and then having the ability to stop it and then just kind of like you know I don't know that I have a problem with. I have a big problem with it. And of course it's over now, but it's like, um, you know, I think this experiment was obviously um, something bad. It was bad. I, and it, it, to me, the whole foundation of it was bad. And, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm very grateful that um, I got to spend time with my father. I'm going to say, I'm going to say my father to me kind of died earlier than when he actually did because like I couldn't really recognize the same person um that I knew when I was younger like um my father's behavior started changing when I was like I was like 14 years old so I didn't get to have that many years with him but like with him like this father that I knew the guy who was funny the guy who was always going off and like you know, he was very opinionated about certain things, and sometimes I didn't always agree with him, but, like, you know, he was, um, uh, he, he had opinions, and he didn't have a problem expressing them, and he was always educating in everything that he said, right? So, I always enjoyed being around him. Like, always. Like, I, I, <laughs> I could never look at a breakfast sausage without thinking about him. The reason why I just remember one day we were sitting at the table and he made me breakfast and I was cutting the sausage and he was laughing because he was pretending that the sausage was afraid to get cut and he was making it move around on the plate. And every time I look at a breakfast sausage, I think about that, right? I mean, he was always somebody that I wanted to be around. Always. I remember like sometimes he would be going off on, you know, um, maybe he was feeling like he was dealing with racism, you know, and he would be talking about his experiences. And I remember I would be asking him questions, you know, at the dinner table, asking him so he would continue to talk. And like my sister would like be kicking me in my leg, like, shut up. I we don't want to hear dad go off. Right. But I appreciated everything that he said. I, I always listened to everything he said. I pre I hung on his word all the time. Um, I obviously had a very strong bond with my father. But anyway, so I'm going to wrap up this video. Um, unfortunately, the art project that I wanted to share wasn't done. But you know what? You never stop trying and you never stop being inspired. You just keep, keep going. Um, that's just pretty much what you have to do, you know. But... Perhaps one day I will get one of those stones and, and, and do it the correct way. Because what I was actually doing was I wanted to see if it would work on a wood slab. It would work on a wood slab. But my biggest issue was, um, you know, I really had a problem with, with the compass. That was kind of hard. <laughs> that was kind of hard, mainly. Um, I think the compass that I had um, was not really meant for working with that sort of material. Like it should have been used on paper maybe, um, or maybe a smooth rock. And this is like a piece of wood and it's not really, what do you call it? It's not really finished. It's not piled down or anything. So it's kind of rough and stuff and bumpy. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up this video and I will be back with another video sometime later. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. Take care. Bye-bye.